Okay, so a new version of RetroPie has just come out and it's available with Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll show how to install it in a minute, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to try out my new controller. So I've always used a wired Xbox 360 controller. Now this is actually not uh, a Microsoft Xbox 360 controller. It's a, it's a third party one from Amazon, but it actually feels just like it. All the buttons and everything is exactly the same. Just works off ordinary AA batteries. And uh, it comes with this dongle. So it means that it, as far as the system is concerned, it is a wired controller. And so its compatibility is excellent. Really, really good for RetroPie. So I've always used the wired Xbox 360 controller because it just works with everything and I like the way it feels and everything. So let's get this plugged in and let's download the latest version of RetroPie. Okay, so I'm running Raspberry Pi OS, which is super easy to install RetroPie from. Uh, and I'm gonna use an SSD drive for this. So I've got my CSL cable. Let's pop that in to my Pi. Uh, I'm running the operating system from an SD card so that I can install to the SSD. And I'll switch over to screen capture now. Okay, so this just shows me that the SSD has been plugged in, so I can cancel that out. And uh, if you haven't got Raspberry Pi Imager, and if you've got it already installed, and it'll be under Accessories and Imager. If you haven't got it installed, you need to go into the Add Remove, which is under Preferences and Add Remove. Uh, this method will work with both the Pi 400 and the Pi 4, so it doesn't matter which one you've got. So scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see Raspberry Pi Imager, the 1.4. Just tick that, hit apply and hit okay and that will install it. So now just to launch it, click down the bottom here, accessories and imager. And this gets updated really often. So choose OS, uh, you can see various different OS's you can install to either an SD card or an SSD drive. Uh, I can see Risk OS is, uh, I don't think that was on there before. But this is also a really handy program to erase. If you've got a, a USB stick or an SD card that's not performing properly, I would use that to erase it because it works really well. Uh, but also you can install a custom image. So like uh, unofficial RetroPie, so Supreme Ultra, which is due out soon, you can install it by that method. But we're going to do the simple method today. So click on RetroPie. Uh, and you can see here for various different models. Oh, it's nice to see that, that Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, so if I click on that, it's only 0.8 of a gig, choose SD card, well in my case it's an SSD, the operating system is running off the SD card, and hit right. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Pop your password in, if you haven't changed it, it will be Raspberry. Okay, so while that's installing, if I go to my channel, and if you do a search for RetroPie on my channel, you'll see that I've done loads of videos on RetroPie and how to add ROMs and how to set up different emulators and various things. So have a look at that. Okay, so verifying goes nice and quick because it's on an SSD, even if it's cheap SSD. Okay, so that's all been written now. Okay, so let's shut this down. And what I want to do when it shuts down is unplug the SD card. There you go, so that's off now. So I can unplug the SD card so I can plug in my joypad adapter and let's unplug and then plug in again to restart. Okay, so that started up, but as you can see, it's not showing any systems because we haven't got any ROMs yet. So let's plug in this little SD card adapter, which I just use as a USB stick because it's very low power and you can use it at the same time as an SSD drive. Okay, so let's go into configuration uh, by pressing the B button on my controller uh, and then go into RetroPie setup press OK uh, and then we've got to do manage packages and let's see some of these optional packages so let's have a look through here and see anything that we think as these are optional packages they might not be installed yeah so PPSSPP isn't installed so I'm going to hit install on that and yes and go back and then Rycast I'll put that on there as well and let's go back because I don't think ReDream shows up here, which is another great Dreamcast emulator. No, it doesn't show up. I don't think it's available in official RetroPie. So manage experimental packages is also worth having a look through. Oh, there's ReDream. So ReDream is in there. Let's install that then. And go back. And what else is in here? Various different things, but I think I'm going to leave it there for now. So let's go back and back and perform reboot. 
and yes. Okay, so you can flick through the systems now and uh, I've got various ROMs on there. So let's go straight in with PlayStation and uh, a bit of my favorite Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX. And I'm just using the default configuration here to see that everything works fine. So audio sounds good. I'm gonna have to get rid of the music though. Let's just go straight in and check all the buttons. Yeah, definitely working fine and lovely and smooth. Game playing the right speed that it should be. Crash. So let's quit out of that by pressing select, start and the Xbox button. That takes us back to the main menu. If I press A, I can go back and I can go between systems. So let's see what else I've got on here. So I mentioned Redream. So I've got two Dreamcast emulators on here. So what I'm gonna do is when I launch a game, straight away I'm gonna press the button again. So I won't do Dave Mirror or Tony Hawk's. I'll do Zombie Revenge. So as soon as I launch the game, I'm gonna press B again. Now. There you go. So now we've got select default emulator for Dreamcast. So I'm gonna use Redream because I prefer Redream. Although some games work better on Rycast, uh, I just, Redream overall works better for me, I think. I'm not gonna change any other setting. I'm just gonna do launch. Nice laptop. So let's skip through all this, just get straight into the gameplay. And I haven't overclocked or anything yet, so I'm not sure how well. I don't know what buttons shoot. Oh, that shoot. So you can see that that's running fine and looks good. Oh, he's got a gun as well. Get a machine gun. So you can see that seems to be working fine with no overclock. So let's quit out of that. So exit, and that takes us back to the menu. So you can see there's a border around the screen and there was on the last two games that I've shown. To get rid of that, hit start, go to quit, and quit emulation station, and yes. And then type in sudo raspi-config. And here we've got display options, underscan, and would you like to enable compensation for displays with overscan? No, and okay. So now if we go to finish, and then reboot, yes. And you can see now that the interface fills the screen, uh, no matter what you put on there. Obviously if I pick an N64 game, it's not gonna completely fill the screen. Uh, because it wasn't widescreen before. I think you can change it, but I like to see things in their correct aspect. And again, I haven't overclocked, haven't done anything to this. Uh, all I've done is initially configure the controller that you saw at the start. Okay, could do with a little bit of tweaking. Uh, I noticed that uh, a lot of the other versions of RetroPie, a lot of the builds uh, lower the or oh, lower the resolution a lot um, because N64 is quite tricky to run. So I would normally overclock but also lower that resolution a bit more. But actually that seems to have picked up now and that seems to be running pretty well. It actually feels very fast. Oh I'll take that. Not that though. Anyway, I hope you liked all this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.